Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Can we call for that daily bread today? Say, Father, say this with me and say it with boldness. Say, Father, today I make demand for my daily bread and I receive it from heaven right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You know, I had a beautiful testimony. On you know, we had this 24 hours prayer and fasting meeting on the first, and you know, during testimony time, she also shared this testimony of how you know she got, went to buy a bag, school bag for her children. And I guess is um, um, what do you call them now? What they call Okrika or Belgium bag? You know, she bought this bag for her children, and then they go home and Trying to open the bag, they saw that there was an inner zip or something. So they opened the zip and there was an envelope there and then there was money inside the envelope. Now think about it. You go to the market, you buy something, you pay for it, you get home and then you open the bag and there was money. And then they opened some foreign currency, some, I think they call Korean currency or something like that. By the time they changed it, it was over a hundred and something thousand. Enough to foot. <laughs> now, such things will make you laugh. <laughs> Why? When we say give us this day, our ah, daily bread, you don't know what you're asking for. You don't know what you're asking for. You don't know how he's going to do it. But you see, <clears throat> Sometimes we see miracles, but we don't know how to trust in it. All right, let's go into today's teaching. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we honor you today. Your word is coming to us expressly by your spirit, who is the spirit of truth. And we receive every bit of it with clarity of understanding. And Lord, I declare right now, burdens are lifted, yokes are destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. All right, so we are talking and walking in spiritual financial intelligence. So I'll share with you yesterday on you know, my journey in these things. So we got to, I, I got to, you know, obey the Lord. I was telling you about trust because we read were, we were Proverbs 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Now, how would you trust someone you have never heard from? You see where there's a problem. And I told you the first step is that you must hear from the Lord personally. So that's the first thing you need to work on. See, so <clears throat> now, how do you trust in one whom you have never heard? So imagine someone comes to you. Think about it. You, you go to an office and you're looking for the boss. You've had an encounter with the boss. You know him. And then you call him. I'm coming to your office. And then you go. And then you sit there. You wait. And then the secretary comes and says, Oh, um, the boss said he will see you um, tomorrow. And then he said, But, 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 but. And then you're wondering. It will go through your mind. I hope the secretary is not trying to block me. I hope, I hope. Now, if the boss comes out himself to say, You know what? I can't see you today. Can we see tomorrow? He said, Okay, sir. Yes, sir. What time tomorrow? Nine o'clock tomorrow. Thank you, sir. I'll be here by nine. And then you leave. Your mind is at rest. But if it's a third party, you will be like, but, um, but did you, uh, did you find out? Did you tell him it's me? Did he, are you sure he knows? <laughs> you understand? Know because you can't trust a third party the same way you would trust the person. So the challenge a lot of people have in trusting in the Lord is because they don't know the Lord. You may have been a church goer for donkey years. It still doesn't change the fact that you don't know the Lord. If you know him, you will trust him. So I said, because I heard him myself say to me, no, nobody came to prophesy that to me. Go back to Abuja. So I said, okay, sir, I trusted him. 
I made up my mind to obey. See, I obeyed because I trusted. I didn't understand the whole thing yet, but I trusted the voice that says, go back. Like I said, it's not like the whole room became cloudy and I stepped into the third heavens and I had angels and I had voices. And no, 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 just in here, in here. Go back to our budget. Okay. And then the Lord began to teach me on my journey in the coming back to our budget. He, he began, because I, I, I was all through that journey asking a lot of questions. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, Jesus didn't ask me how you will leave. So I said, okay, Lord, so how do I leave? The first thing the Lord said to me was this, a big shocker. He said, you waste a lot of money. That threw me off balance, you know, like you, you know. See, when, when we read that God spoke to Abraham, the Bible said Abraham fell on the floor laughing. <laughs> That's how I felt. <laughs> like, I'm talking to you, I say, you... I said, Lord, so how do I, how do I leave? And the Lord said, first and foremost, you waste a lot of money. I, I was in a bus traveling. There were other people in the bus. It's so amazing that somebody is in the bus talking with God and, and having fellowship. And every other person is just there. Mm, how are we going to get to this place? You know, but someone is there in a different world having fellowship with God. And God is giving him solutions to his issues and other issues also. Amazingly. So... <clears throat> And I said, you waste a lot of money. I laughed. I'm like, oh, oh, how can a broke man be wasting money? And the Lord, how? And then the Lord said, I look up my arms. The Lord said to me, the offerings you give. And now I became serious. <laughs> what offerings? And your mind is like, which offering have I given that is a waste? I said, Lord, offerings? He said, yeah, the offerings you give, what is it for? And I thought to myself, why do I give offerings? I mean, in church. Why do I give offerings in church? That's what the offerings you give, what is it for? I said, Lord, it's offering. You know, well, scriptures don't appear before the house of the Lord. Oh, don't appear before the Lord empty. You know, right? Ah, offerings. And then the Lord said, you see why I say you waste a lot of money? You don't even know why you give offerings. I said, Lord, talk to me. And then he said, you are like a farmer who goes to his farm. And then someone meets him at the farm and like, oh, Mr. Farmer, what are you planting? He said, no, I'm just planting seeds, you know, and, and just planting seeds, right? See? A farmer will be deliberate. This year, I want to plant corn. Now, if he's planting corn, he knows in the next six, seven to eight months, or some nine months, he is going, some even lesser than that. <clears throat> he knows the species of corn to plant and the season he will receive his harvest. Based on that, he intelligently says, okay, I'm waiting for the first rain. After the first rain, I plant this corn. And then he goes, uh, a, 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 one who's technically sound, goes to a seed farm and asks for this particular seed. I want the corn that I will harvest in four months time. So they said, okay, this is the specie. So he buys it and goes to the land and they tell him this is how to treat it and then this is how to plant it he plants it and takes care of it and then the harvest comes in his four months someone else like okay i want to do it you understand what I'm a farmer is deliberate in his farming and the lord says you've got to be deliberate in your offerings don't give offering because the church says it is time for offering hell oh, oh you know that's why you squeezed out the money that's why you'd give the change that's why you understand what i'm saying that's why you do all those things because you don't have a purpose and now because you don't have a purpose that money becomes a waste but i gave it to the church i say wait no it's a waste to you 
The church will definitely use your money, praise God. But you are the farmer who have put seed without knowing what he's planting or what he's planting for. You know the challenge with that? You don't know when to come for your harvest. And you know how life is. It's time for your harvest. You don't come to your land. Someone else is going to go there and reap your harvest. <laughs> and, and you planted, you know, this corn seed because you just threw it there and threw it there and threw it there. You don't know when. You don't know how they grow. You know nothing about it. What did you even plant? Um, I don't know. I think it's, was it corn or um, beans or I don't know. All right. When did you plant? I think last year or so. Have you checked your land? Um, no. Um, maybe I should go check. You go to that land, someone else has harvested your crop. Either human beings or animals will come and harvest your crop. See? Now that's how life is. And that's why a lot of believers do. So for the first time, the Lord spoke to me and said, from henceforth, now I, I heard this from the Lord. I believe if you apply it, See, it starts with obedience. When you start obeying, then you open the door for the Lord. So like James said, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So he said to me, from henceforth, every offering you give on a Sunday, because I was going to church and, and you know, every Sunday you go to church. <laughs> every offering you give on Sunday, call it the seed to meet your needs for that week and i was like whoa now you know most times we don't think of offerings as seed you know you go to church and you need to sow a special seed and say ah so a special seed and then you know sometimes you see results when you sow that special seed but the Lord was dealing with me from the very basis. So here you are, every service you give an offering, you expect nothing. Really, I mean, you're not deliberate about it. But then when it's time for giving a special seed, ah, your heart is inside. And then you give. Now you need to take the same principle to your normal offering giving. In other words, let it not be normal anymore. Are you getting what I'm saying? I I'm telling you, from that moment, the offering became something else in my spirit. I knew, uh, boy, I'm not just going to be giving offering anymore like that. <laughs> I became deliberate. I tell you what I began to do. Now, this is where your intelligence comes in. This is where your brain begins to think. Okay, if this is the seed, that will meet my need for the week. Boy, we've got to treat this seed with some respect. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I began to give my offering from home. What do I mean from home? I, I don't I don't get to church. It's like, okay, offering time. No, no, no. As I'm going to church, I, I go on my knees. I take out that offering, put it in an envelope. <clears throat> I say, Father, I'm going, I'm going to worship you today. Thank you, Lord. Father, I present an offering as I come with you, Lord. Lord, here is the seed to meet my needs for this whole week. Lord, thank you. Oh, Baru Sekela Bragiya Kasabaya. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And, and, and with all that confidence, I go to church. Offering time. Whether you dance, the pastor background, you drop it. And, and that there goes my seed to meet my needs for the week. And boy, I come back home. I said, hey, any trouble that is going to come, come. <laughs> I've got seed in the ground. And hey, you know what the Lord taught me? He taught me that the offerings that we give is the one that the harvest comes immediately. You see, the harvest just comes. I began to operate that. And I realized, whoa, truly, when every need comes up, the harvest is already there to match with that need. I began to notice that. See, now, God, I wasn't careless about this at all. Remember the scripture? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And so the Lord said these things to me. I'm like, okay, 
I will begin to practice this. The Lord didn't tell me a business to start. The Lord didn't tell me who to go meet to call, ask for money. He told me to change the way I do something I normally do just like that. You see, when we say be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that is where the miracle will begin when your mind is changed. Our time is up. Praise God. Father, we honor you today. <clears throat> These things, Lord, they are changing lives. And I pray for clear understanding, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, have the best day ever. Bye.